regularly scheduled board meeting of Nelson <coughs> County Schools on July 17, 2018 at approximately 5.02. Uh, first thing we'll do is we'll stand for Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight we have Patience Turner and a team from the Nelson County Area Technology Center and they're going to be, uh, Mr. Brewer, would you like to talk a little bit about the project sure. they're leading? So they've, uh, they've been tinkering, we have, um, we have several different pathways in our IT program and uh, this is Mr. Kendra, our IT teacher, one of his senior students this year and they play around with several different things and all that different styles they are still their thunder so I'll let them tell you what they're doing and all of it. All right, so uh, this is one of the robots that we have. We actually have three, but uh, this one, it actually, the arm will move up and down. And we've been, do we've been working on this one for a whole school year now. But um, we have a basic stamp, which is like a little tiny little microcontroller, I guess you could call it. And we have we have to put an Arduino in it this fall. And then so far we've had <coughs> we've had really good times with this one mostly. I mean we've we've had it picking up moths, we've had it picking up dusters, we've had it just doing varieties of things. And so far I I've really enjoyed working on this one mostly. And well can't really crop it, but we have like these little uh, controller modules. It's like there's these two little rows of them. And yeah. You can kind of see inside there the electronics. What she's talking about, it's got two rows of relays in there and then the motor controller and then the basic stamp over here in the corner. Uh, she brought, the, I brought along with me, I told her that she'd bring, bring the Arduino she programmed this year. This is the one that she programmed, so if you're wondering what an Arduino is, it's a small programmable computer. And, this one, one of the projects they, that they did at the end of the year, and this is the one patients did, and we left it wired up. Uh, this has got the Simon Says programmed into it, so we'll let uh, we'll let Mr. Jackie here see if he can beat the Simon Says. <laughs> <laughs> so just hit any button. Any button. Yeah. Probably won't be one of the best ones yet. 
the third one we had a little creeper of Minecraft built up built up on it and it's the same thing as this one. The only difference is is this one has a horse on it. So after after we get this one done and get the creeper and this one all together, I mean we'll have a little <coughs> force of robot a little force of robots. So what what uh, we're planning on doing is actually making an animatronic for like little ears move the mouth, we're gonna have tail that switches and so kind of when, when she means a work in progress, Mr. Jack, you remember seeing the creeper robot from STLC. So we're going to take this back to STLP and have fun with it. And we might take the creeper again, but we wanted another celebrity at the STLP because I tell you what, that thing got more selfies, I think, than anything. You know, well, and that, that one then, Patience in the, the creeper one, then they did also have, uh, they have audio and video where you could see them and then um, you could also little, talk to them? Yeah, um, in the bottom of the base, we had a little Bluetooth speaker that we uh, Bluetooth of one of our phones. And we had a little camera, a little GoPro, and a little false picture to kind of make it look like it has two little camera eyes. And we, kind of, we had fun with that. Yeah, and you, you creeped up behind a few of the student SDLP people. Uh, yeah. well, uh, when we took it to state, little kids were completely fascinated. Yeah. There's actually a little Minecraft whole little section, and they, they went berserk. They loved it. So, patient. I mean, so you've shown this. I mean, here is robotics. I mean, I, I've seen the Cooper one. We've seen the horse now. Uh, very appropriate, you know. Horse got a little more you know, blue rest day. So, I mean, what type of applications would this have outside of taking a test to LP or, or or showing us some of the things it could do here? Um, like you can like very easily use as like an educational experience. Because I mean, it's not every day, you know, everybody will be able to have a like drive a robot, and it gets people really excited and being able to see what you can do with technology and take it further more than just the little thing in your pocket. You can go so much more. With it. I was thinking probably uh, I would think of both of the companies that you all work for, the uh, robotics and the mechanics in some of the manufacturing there, mm -hmm. some of the applications for it. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of organizations that are moving towards robotics because of the uh, lack of manpower. Mm -hmm. um, people to, to program them. Like, we also have this little thing for Red Theory Pile that uh, we program during the second semester. And they, in, down in Tennessee, they use them as traffic lights and, and batteries and everything. It, you, there's almost barely any limitation in what you can reach out with. Well, they're cheap too, right? Thirty bucks. Um, depending on which kids you get, but mostly. So you're a senior, right? Yes, sir. So uh, how many years have you been taking this pathway at the ATC? Um, I've been in it since I was a sophomore, okay. and <coughs> now I'm taking. I just have to take networking and special topics and. Special topics is mainly uh, where you can explore even more and go into building and programming things such as a robot. So you, you, I'm sorry. I'm just going to say, so you probably know where my next question is going. Which one is it? What? So what do you want to be with your robot? Um, I haven't completely decided. I actually thought about being a programmer mm -hmm. at one point. It, I mean, it, it's crazy about the jobs that are needed for technology power field. I mean, someone had to sit there behind like a computer screen to make the math of it. And in order for it to actually be here, there has to be somebody behind it. Do, do you enjoy that, that order and that thought process of trying to figure out the challenge? Um, a lot of times I do, but sometimes it gets really frustrating because if it's just one thing wrong, <coughs> then you, just, you have to go back and you have to find it and you have to fix it. I'm sorry. No, that's, you're a problem solver. Um, in some things, yes. <laughs> so have you had um, an opportunity to maybe go out into the community and maybe see these robotics in a manufacturing environment? or? Um, I've been thinking about it. Actually, where my grandparents live, there's this uh, Chisholm, like Chisholm Automation. I've actually been really thinking about going into it. And it, like outside their signs, they have, it's, it's almost just like, the little robot here, but it don't have the base. It's like a robotic arm. So 
I mean, with that presentation and the Chisholm automation, I might I actually thought about going in there and looking around and seeing what they're going to do. To. I hope you get that opportunity. As a side note, the last thing I want to mention about patients is she was by, we had a non-traditional camp in early June, uh, and it, it ended up being expanded into <coughs> girls as well. We had, we had uh, several girls there and several boys, but patients was basically my assistant instructor, so she knew enough about the Arduino that she could, she was a co-teacher for the class. I was real proud of her for that, so hopefully we'll, she'll move on to do more of that, and uh, anyway, have fun with her. So, so patients just, uh, Mr. Canfield, just go over there, I got you. Pretty much, yeah, make my job easy. I mean, most of the time that's what the seniors do, you know. They have me for so many years that, you know, I'm like, take off, guys. <laughs> Especially when the eighth graders come through and through the building, you know, they, they, they do a great job when the young ones come in, lead them through and so forth. You've got good students over there. Really appreciate that. Nice job. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Josh Bunch. I think I know all of you, and I think all of you probably know me now, but I am the energy manager for the district. If I can put one word, it's about efficiency in every way that we can, particularly trying to bring those utility bills down everywhere that is possible and <clears throat> be good stewards of what uh, we have, what's available to us. And so there's been much made recently of Nelson County Pride. And so going to that, I think we've got a source of pride I want to share with you today in, in this. <clears throat> Uh, oh, I need to turn this on, though. Bloomfield Elementary School <clears throat> is now an Energy Star school, but what's even more significant about that is now every facility that we have for which Energy Star can be applied for is now an Energy Star facility. And so uh, that's a great milestone. We've gotten a lot of kudos from uh, our engineer guys uh, for work they've helped us with, of course, but diligence. And I've been a part of this for a year. The Energy uh, uh, effort these these things that the initiatives they've been taking have been going on for 12 years so glad to be able to help carry the torch uh, but our facilities receive the energy star signifying superior energy performance let me talk a little bit about what energy star is just for a minute what is that label what does that mean <clears throat> excuse me basically we're saying that our buildings are in the top 25 percent in energy efficiency and so if you see this little graph here the top 25 percent of buildings in that same category uh, get the energy star label and so all of our buildings have met that and buildings that uh, get into that level typically use 35 percent less energy and cause 35 percent less greenhouse gas emissions uh, our facilities we're at 38 almost 39 percent so we're doing even a little bit better than the average and so uh, some stuff to be excited about <clears throat> Energy Star, that little symbol, is something we're going to make sure we're making much of in the facilities, on our websites. Uh, it is one of the most recognized symbols in our culture. 85% of people recognize it, and it gets favorable ratings right up there with good housekeeping. It's tied for number one with good housekeeping. So, uh, so it is an excellent thing for us. Let's talk about um, <clears throat> the schools themselves. These are the scores, so 75 and above get the Energy Star rating, and you'll see all the facilities there. Four of them are a perfect 100. There's only one school that's not at least in the 90s, or one facility, I should say. Now, you'll notice that some facilities are missing, particularly the Early Learning Center, and the only reason it's not there is because that category of building is not even eligible to apply for Energy Star. I'm not honestly certain why that is, but that's the case. And so all the facilities we can apply for have been applied for and have reached the goal. And so. Uh, Benefits, 38% usage reduction over the last 12 years, uh, and the savings that go with that. So it's a lot of dollars, I'll show you in a moment. I think it's also big, there's been a lot made recently of community involvement and being connected to the community. This is a good way to build some goodwill with our community to say we're really trying to be good stewards of your hard-earned tax dollars. And so, personally, I'm a big fan of that. I want us to be very careful with those dollars as much as we can. Also, I think when you have potential educators that we're interviewing. Uh, it's easier to get talent because a lot of folks really care about this issue. And if we can say all of our facilities are Energy Star, uh, I think that's a real positive. Um, <clears throat> property values increase. 
If we ever wanted to use one of our buildings to lease to a federal entity, it has to be Energy Star. Uh, there could be future mandates that come, state level, federal level, that could tighten up on us. We're already there. Uh, but ultimately, the biggest benefit, there's less money in the outlets and there's more money for the students. And so that's really what we're ultimately about with all of this. So here are a few more numbers for you. Our baseline year was September 06 to the following August. So then our first full year in the energy program, we avoided over $200,000 worth of cost. By the 16-17 year, which is the last full year I have data for, that yearly total had risen to almost $800,000. So our total avoided usage since the energy program started, we've cut utility usage by almost 40%, as you can see. Total avoided cost during that time is over $6 million. And so uh, a lot of good stuff there, a lot, a lot of stuff to feel good about. And so my goal is to help maintain where we are. Uh, as uh, Tim Hawkinsmith has said before, um, all the low-hanging fruit has been gotten. Uh, probably the two biggest factors that contribute to this is moving all of our schools to a ground source, you might call it geothermal, heating and air, big energy saver, and then LED lighting is another big one. And there are lots of other projects and things that go with occupant behavior that matter, uh, but those are probably the two biggest pieces of that. So another big step we're hoping to take forward, when I was hired, this is one of the initiatives and we've begun it, is to do student energy teams in each school. So our goal is over the next three years to have a student energy team as an extracurricular group in every school. Well, they will learn the ins and outs of how energy works. So there's science, there's social studies, there's math, there's all sorts of things across the curriculum that our young people can learn. We're gonna give them instrumentation. They're gonna do some of the work that I do in their own school and take ownership of that. Uh, on the elementary school level, on the middle school level, and on the high school level, uh, this fall, we're going to be initiating the program in three schools, one of each type. And so Nelson County High School, Bloomfield Elementary, and Bloomfield Middle School, we already have sponsors that are ready to roll with it, and so we're excited about it. We've already got some curriculum kind of set up for them and some ideas rolling. And the hope is, eventually, on the high school level, is uh, Kenton County Schools have done this. They're going to partner with us and show us the ropes to give these guys a career path that they're interested in. And maybe do some co-oping here locally to increase energy savings for local businesses and so forth. And so we're excited about that possibility. So I'm gonna be spending a lot of time on that going forward. But uh, the upshot of it is um, all this hard work that so many people have invested in, uh, a number of folks in this district, including the board, 12 years ago had the vision to start. We're really seeing the benefits of that really come to fruition. So that's all I had to share. I didn't know if you had any questions. I'd be glad to try to answer it if, if you do. The school, the school teams, how are they incentivized or uh, recruited? Right. Well, <clears throat> right now, of course, the teams don't exist yet. We'll be piloting them this fall. And so right now I have three school sponsors, one at each school. They've already begun to identify some potential students who might have some interest, uh, might have some ability in this area. And uh, this fall, they'll be right in there with all the other clubs vying for people's attention and trying to get them in there and get it started. So, uh, and we're working on some incentives for them that if they help us with certain benchmarks, direct benefits for their school. So they see some direct return. Your, your comment about the starting 12 years ago, too, I think that's a very good point there. I mean, you got to think back to folks like uh, Mickey Rapier, uh, Adam Weebly, uh, Frank Hall, especially, uh, as well as Larry Pate, because I know whenever those four uh, were on the school board, that's when a lot of this work really started. And I have to, have to really give some big kudos to both Nicky Raker and Larry Pate. Yeah. Mr. Raker, from his experiences with Salt River, sure he works. Mr. Pate, with his experiences in the past, being an HVAC in construction, and, you know, it's just a, a lot of, of great uh, not institutional knowledge that both those folks had that they would be able to ask those questions that would sure. get, us, get us down this path. Right. Um, and I hate to start naming names, but I will say Tim Hogginsmith, and yeah. Todd Sanders, Kevin Mattingly, these guys have been very big in seeing some of these things come to fruition and just keeping it in mind wherever there's innovation that's reasonable, it's got a reasonable payoff that we're making those moves. And, and the partnerships with CMTA, yeah. uh, BCD, the construction, yeah. the partnerships with them, uh, and architectural firms as well. The, uh, you mentioned or you showed there that 
over that time period, I think this is something we want to make sure to make a point of, over that time period of about a decade, there's been a little over $6 million worth of avoided cost. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, whenever people hear that, they think about energy savings, they, they latch on to that savings work. Mm -hmm. And so they then think that somewhere there is sitting $6 million <laughs> that has not been spent on electricity or on propane or on uh, whatever it might be. And so that money then could be used for other things. And in reality, <coughs> that's been costs that have been avoided because those energy costs have gone up per unit over that decade. So we may still be saving or spending the same dollar, similar dollars of money. We're just having to buy fewer units of electricity, fewer units of any other um, energy units. Yeah, cost avoidance is a little bit of a tricky term. Uh, it's really a reference to what would we be spending now if it were 12 years ago and we changed nothing. That's really what we're talking about here. So, uh, but that is important because it is dollars we would be spending were sure. it not for that. So. Well, and as you mentioned with Mr. Hawkinsmith too, I mean, there, for a decade, I, I know he's uh, been very good at educating the board about the loss of state funding. Mm -hmm. Well, being able to avoid that $6 million being spent on, I'm gonna use the phrase, nothing but electricity. And I know it's more than electricity, but nothing but energy uh, has allowed us to be able to, to be cost effective, be able to absorb some of those reductions from the state level, although we still don't like it. So. Yeah, yes, yes. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. Uh, moving on into uh, agenda item number four, the operations consent agenda. Uh, this is the information, personnel actions, treasurer's report, Bills and claims, Munis report, leaves of absence, minutes from previous meeting, overnight out of state trips, a revised 2018-19 school calendar, uh, also appointing the board secretary, uh, Ms. Bradley appointing the board treasurer, Ms. Owens uh, approved the treasurer's bond, and as well as some board training approval. Um, one thing to make a note of here that I, I think it's important that revising of the calendar. Uh, that is not changing the start date of the school year, the end date of the school year, the necessary the length of the days. This was very specific to the Nelson County Early Learning Center that needed some just little tweaks, little tweaks done, but it still requires an official uh, motion and vote for those minor tweaks. So. And what was those tweaks? What's the start time? It's a week earlier. Yeah. It's yeah. moved up a week. Yeah. Starting was a week earlier. I, 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 saw a, I, saw a hand, I saw a hand go in there if you wanted to expand on it any or? When we had our discussion back in the winter and we talked about every other Friday, it's including that as well as instead of starting on the 20th, we're starting on the 13th. I just want everybody to know that. Go. Because sometimes people don't read until the letter goes out that your student or your child's coming and explain, you know, the dates. So thank you. So with that on the operations consent agenda, if there aren't any other questions, we would need a motion. Motion. Motion by Ms. Berry. Second. Second by Ms. Breeding. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, moving on into number five, efficient resource, <coughs> resource management. And 5A, which is the uh, K-L-E-F-E-F, that's a mouthful. Program Fund Participation, Mr. Hogginsmith. It's the Kentucky Law Enforcement Foundation Program Fund. So we're just going to call it CLEF. There we go. Um, we're asking you to approve that tonight. Uh, what, the, what that program is, um, when you get your insurance bill, if you look at the fine print, you'll see a fee that goes to fund the Kentucky Law Enforcement Foundation Program <coughs> Fund. What that does is provide a police training incentive for police officers that have the full certification. Now, the good news is, uh, this is the last step, well, a couple of pieces of good news. Number one, it doesn't cost the district any money. We will receive funds through this program that will be, be then passed through, uh, through the payroll process to our SRO, who is with us tonight in the back of the room back here, Mr. McCoy. Uh, it's been a long process getting him here, a lot of board meetings, uh, a lot of discussion. I know it's going to go with all the board members for some time. Uh, he's here as of 7-1. Uh, 
Um, and this is, uh, I guess, the last step in that process. I'm excited to be able to recommend that to you tonight. You know, as I was uh, thinking about what I would say, other than uh, just the basic piece there, I got to look at BJ's, BJ McCoy's uh, resume. And, uh, you know, I, I know he's going to do a fabulous job for us. And I see that, uh, you know, you, in case you, I don't know if you know, knew, he was uh, with the uh, uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife for about eight or nine years. And uh, in uh, 2012, he was the Officer of the Year. 2013, he was the Officer of the Year. In 14, he was the Officer of the Year. And in 16, he was the Officer of the Year. So I think that tells you a couple of things. It tells you that he, probably going to do a great job for us and maybe he slacked off a little bit in 2015. <laughs> uh, so I, but joking aside, I'm, uh, I'm very excited to recommend that we participate in this and, uh, and, and get moving for quickly with this program. This is really going to be a good thing for our school district. I know BJ will be a part of uh, uh, developing culture in our schools that will make them safer than they've ever been. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to be able to recommend this to you. So this is a zero cost district. It's passed through on training reimbursement to Mr. McCoy? Correct. So, so any other questions on it? Need a motion then to approve participation in the K CLEF, right? CLEF program fund. A uh, uh, motion there by, um, I just drew my complete blank. Chef Dickers. I know. <laughs> it's, not, it's the cold medicine today. <laughs> a motion by Mr. Dickers. Could be all day. Second. <laughs> Second by Ms. Dye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Didn't slack in 2018. I, I did, yeah. Today, today has been one of those days. Uh, moving on to 5B, then the local planning committee update, Mr. Sanders. Yeah, I'll give you guys a little update on where we are with the local planning committee. First off, I would like to tell you guys, you should be very excited about the, about the new staff that you got coming on at, at Nelson County Schools. I'm excited. I've met most of them and got to know them a little bit. It's exciting times for Nelson County Schools, so, so be proud of what you have going there. Um, we have, at this point, we've placed an ad in the Kentucky Standard to advertise for our community leaders. We need three community leaders to be a part of the committee. So we've done that. That ad will run Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And then uh, I've sent an email out to all Nelson County staff to, to get the, uh, the nominations for parents, teachers, and building administrators. We plan to have the committee finalized by sometime around between August 13th and the 17th. And then uh, we'll be ready to go and get started then. What has caused the delay is that the architects have to get, they have to get things ready with the new system that, that the Kentucky Department of Education has put out. So once they get everything going and they've done their evaluations, then we'll be prepared to come to you guys, present the committee, and get started with our meeting process. Anyone have any questions on that? And um, Mr. Bradley, have you talked to Mr. Sanders about who the board representative yes. do? So Ms. Breeding, who um, five years ago now would be uh, the summer before she became a board member, was a community member representative on the last local mm -hmm. planning committee. And so uh, Ms. Breeding has um, uh, offered up and agreed to be the, the board representative. So that's going to be a lot of good okay. historical knowledge that Ms. Breeding brings to it. Yeah, I was actually on the committee with her. That's that right. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll be getting going. Appreciate it. Thank All right, you. Thank you. Uh, college and career readiness, uh, item number six, six A, the instructional fees. Good evening. Uh, I guess I'll do an introduction first. My name is Chase Goff, and I'm the new director of student leadership and learning for Nelson County Schools. Excited to be here with you all. Uh, originally from Bowling Green, Kentucky, so moving to so Barstown wasn't originally on my radar this summer, but when you get an opportunity to join a team like this and a community like this, you, you take it and you run with it. So my family and I are in the process of moving up here and, and joining this community, and, and I'm very excited to be here with you all. Um, hopefully as we move forward, we'll talk about some things a little bit more riveting than instructional fees, but tonight that's what's on the agenda. So um, as you can see here, these are the instructional fees for Nelson County High School and Thomas Nelson High School. Those are the only two schools in the, the district that will have instructional fees. 
Uh, I know in, in speaking to the principals, they both have plans to use these fees to help increase uh, instruction in the classroom, implementing some more technology in the, in the schools and in the classrooms, and using those for, for instructional purposes uh, mainly. So there they are. Um, not a lot to say other than those are the fees, but I will try to fill any questions if you might have any. I have a question, and it, this is much to be my ignorance of the whole process, but I understand, okay, there's not a concert band, there's not a marching band at Thomas Nelson. The, why is there a technology fee of $40 at Thomas Nelson and a $50 instructional fee at, at Nelson County High School? I guess I'm confused. Why are the things that are the same, like parking permit, 10 bucks? Why is it $10 more for an instructional fee at Nelson County but over a technology fee? What's the difference, distinction there for me? I can speak to that. Uh, the, the, I think the reality is uh, our district, in order from some different historical patterns, as schools go through a budgeting process, they uh, traditionally look at the way they're allocating. So at Nelson County High School, uh, traditionally they've had a few departments that charge fees for certain classes um, that may have may have really uh, taken the uh, majority of their funding potentially. And uh, I think with that, you know, Nelson County High School's um, been in place and their fees have evolved over the course of 50 years. And um, in the case of Thomas Nelson, it's only been in place for six years, and so it's been pretty stable. So in terms of the fee process, I will tell you that uh, Thomas Nelson does have the concert band and marching band. And it's just a little different. Um, it's been a little different vision and process in the beginning because Thomas Nelson was so small. Uh, they started with eight members in the band, and they really built everything from scratch by nature of it being so small. Um, and I think this is something, this is a great example of something as a district that we want to, we, and really Mr. Goff, uh, working with principals across the district to look more broadly at student leadership access because of marching band and, and um, uh, concert band are really forms of student leadership. The difference here is those are for classes that they're taking too because there's a commitment level there. Um, and, and the same with the, the instructional fee. Um, I, I can assure you we come back this time next year this conversation is going to be much more robust as we look at this more closely with all principals over the course of the next 11 months. Any other questions? Okay, so then we would need a motion uh, to approve the 2018-2019 instructional fees as presented. I'll make a motion. A motion by Ms. Breeden. I'll second. Second by Mr. Dickerson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Goff. Um, moving on to number seven, safe and caring environment. And 7A, the Code of Acceptable Behavior and Discipline. Ms. Bradley. So I'm, pre I'm presenting on this this year. Uh, we've talked in the last couple of months about making a, um, a book that is much more than just about uh, discipline. Uh, that is really a much more broad vision for our district. And that is what excites me about this whole process is creating a vision we can share with our parents that is much more than just policy. I will tell you, we have a committee uh, that started middle of May, and they met a few times as a team of assistant principals uh, that really got this off the ground, and uh, they started working on something called the Pride Book. Um, I'll also tell you that I think in the same sense as we just talked about fees, that we, we figured out pretty quickly that we needed to focus on the Pride Book over a, a longer period of time, and that we were not able to make any um, substantive changes to policy without understanding the needs of the district um, and working closely with the principals on that. So um, in terms of the Code of Acceptable Behavior and Discipline, there have been really minor edits to formatting uh, for this year um, and essentially no changes to policy from 2017 to 2018. Um, the only place that there were minor edits were in the cases where assistant principals felt like they needed a little more flexibility for a given consequence because um, they didn't have, they couldn't necessarily choose between a number of consequences, they only had one option. Uh, and they felt like that was important. Beyond that, this is essentially the same code of acceptable behavior and discipline as our previous year. My goal is to ensure that we have a discipline, well, I'll change the term, that's seems like a pun, a rigorous process to ensure that this committee is working diligently 
to um, study this code of acceptable behavior and discipline and make a more um, collaborative process throughout the course of this year. So essentially I'm presenting to you tonight the code of acceptable behavior and discipline that looks very similar to last year. If, if we had suggestions on this, who leads that committee that we would send those to? It's a great question, and we don't have a formal leader at this point. Um, if you look at the document, uh, thus this summer, uh, Mr. Webster from Thomas Nelson and Ms. Coleman from Nelson County started. They were the original two assistant principals that started the conversation. A few other assistant principals jumped onto that team over the course of that um, first few weeks. You can see on page two the original planning team, which Ms. Barry and I had some good conversations about, thinking back to the origins of this process. Um, and this year, the team consisted of, and will continue to consist of, some of our assist assistant principals. We also talked about the importance of um, the board attorney being a part of this process, as well as teachers, parents, coaches, etc. So. Again, this is something we started in the middle of May. So you're looking at about an eight week process. They met three times um, and started to piece it together and they started to have a good conversation. Uh, but we still have some work to do to make sure that this is going to be uh, a living process where every year we're continuing to, to strengthen that conversation. And, cons and consistency too, uh, Mr. Bradley. Absolutely. The key, and that's the key to understanding this, all of, all of these policies is really being consistent with them to know what, what is effective and aligns our vision. So in the interim, I mean, if there are any uh, suggestions or things that a board member would like to uh, have uh, uh, be kept in mind, would be just following yeah, through you would be absolutely. the best way? In the interim, you can feel free to send anything to me. I would say in the next six weeks, this will be a more formalized committee. The, um, so since this is the um, uh, student code of conduct document for the 18 years with one that's starting up. Um, as far as uh, student and parent access to this document, I mean just a, very briefly if you can just kind of uh, give us the quick overview of how do students and parents become aware of it. Um, we also know that we always like to have some sort of uh, recognition from that student and parent or guardian that they've received it and, and understand it. Yeah. Yes. I Every year, uh, the beginning of the year, we have a process that allows us to monitor that. So this will be available online um, after today, assuming that it's approved. And then uh, we'll also have hard copies in schools for parents and students to utilize. Uh, the parents on the form that they sign, they'll be able to, to identify if they looked at a digital or paper copy. And they'll, uh, it's, it stipulates that they have access to both. I, I was thinking last year, whenever we did the online registration, that was part of the sign-offs. Is that the same, same thing again this year? Okay. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. We we'll need a motion then to approve the uh, code of acceptable behavior and discipline for the 2018-19 school year. Motion. Motion by Ms. Dye. Second. Y'all gonna play paper, rock, scissors? I get it. Okay. <laughs> Second by Ms. Berry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, moving on into 7B, uh, memorandum of agreement uh, between Nelson County Schools and Simply Kentucky Head Start. Ms. Clark. Hello, how are you guys? Um, so this is our annual agreement to provide services and work with um, Head Start for any of our students. So I'll ask for a motion to approve. Yeah, it, it's more formality. So, a motion by Ms. Dye. I'll second. Second by Ms. Breeding. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, moving on into item 7C, the ARC. 504 chairpersons for the 18-19 school year, Ms. Clark. This is also um, your annual um, approval for people by position that can lead ARC meetings or um, a 504 meeting. And those positions have not changed. Motion. Motion by Ms. Perry. 
Second by Mr. Dickerson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, moving into 7D, low incidence consultant, Ms. Clark. This also is a um, renewal. She has contracted with us in the past. She is a low incidence consultant. Is Dr. Spriggs from the University of Kentucky. Um, and she works with our teachers and our students with um, moderate to severe disabilities in the classroom for behavior or academics, either work. Any questions? So we need a motion then. Motion. Motion by Ms. Breed. Second. <coughs> Second by Ms. Berry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Uh, moving into 7E, Mental Health Services Contract, Ms. McCoy. Thank you. I'll first introduce myself. Um, most of you may know me. I'm coming home to be in my home district. Um, like Mr. Goff, it was not on my radar to come back from KDE. I love working with social emotional wellness and health at the state level. And then my home district posted this position as they were really making it a priority and I couldn't say no. And I, I wanted to come on board. I'm passionate about this work. Um, and so today I'll just bring to you um, something to get your approval on that we continue our contractual services with our mental health providers. We contract with Communicare, um, JP Interventions, and Astro Behavioral Health. And so just to continue those contractual services for our students. So I'm just asking for approval. So moved. Motion by Mr. Dickerson. I'll second. Second by Ms. Dye. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. McCoy. Thank you. Get Mr. McCoy back on his game for that one. I know. I'm not sure what happened in that year. <laughs> uh, moving on into item number eight, student and shareholder engagement, 8A, guest comments. Uh, guest comment policy, any person wishing to address the board may do so by following these rules. Individuals representing themselves are limited to three minutes. Individuals representing a group are limited to five minutes. Please step up to the microphone, state your name and address, and if you represent a group, state the name of the group you are representing. So then I believe we would need a motion to adjourn the regular session. Motion. Motion by Ms. Breeding. Second. Second by Ms. Berry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. There's no need for an executive session tonight. So, thank you. I'm sorry.